Oh, oh my God, there he is. <laughs> hey man, can you hear me? I can, can you hear me? Oh, excellent. Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Good. Hey man, well, you thank you so much for taking the time out. Did you only, Atlanta you've gone to now? I'm in Atlanta. And you uh, literally just touched down a few hours ago or something? No, I I, I got here uh, last Thursday. Oh, okay. I think it was. Um, I had I had to quarantine and and you know work and uh, do designs from here. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's still still a ton of stuff to do, but yeah, got here uh, prepping, 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 pre prepping. So oh, man. <laughs> honestly, man, it, it means so much that you take the time to do this. It's really, really kind of mind blowing for me, honestly. But um, oh, I guess. Man. I'm sure everyone knows who you are, but obviously I, I was looking at, I know I've known who you are for a long time, but when I did go back and check over the, was it the IMBD list yeah. of everything you've done? So just, yeah. there was so many surprises, just things that I didn't know you were involved with. Like I'm a massive werewolf fan. I love werewolf movies and you worked on Bad Moon, which is one of my favorites. I guess <laughs> I'd just like to start by saying like, do you like what was your um, involvement with that? What was, what was the story with Bad Moon? I, I worked on on Bad Moon. Uh, God, that was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> I, I worked for a, a guy named Steve Johnson. Had a company called XFX. Uh, yeah. uh, <clears throat> considered a legend in the in the FX makeup world. And um, anyway, I was working for him for quite a few years uh, early on, and uh, that was one of the movies we had in the shop. So I was in the shop building uh, stuff. I built a, a werewolf head that comes down and. Bites this guy in the head. Yeah, the you know, guy in the woods with the helmet on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trying to make that helmet, I made that helmet out of wax. I had to take a helmet, and mold it, and then make it out of really thin breakaway wax. So the werewolf head that I made, that was on like big scissor things, comes down and oh, you know man. crushes through the hat and stuff. So that and uh, worked on the suit and uh, you know just stuff here and there. So you know. That was uh, such a cool werewolf design, man. It's one of the best ones. I love that. The way I, I didn't, I can't take credit for designing that. That was Steve mm -hmm. Johnson and, and I think Norman Cabrera. Oh, okay. And, uh, but I, I helped. But uh, but yeah, that was that was a long time ago. That's a blast from the past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to watch it when I was, I guess, when I was in my teenage years. It was on what we have Sky TV over here. They had Sky Movies. They used, they used to play it quite a lot. Oh, okay. It's, it's got to be one of my top. I mean, my favorite ones, Dog Soldiers. Have you seen that? Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's my favorite. And then uh, I know a lot of people swear by American Werewolf in London. I, I Maybe I like the howling a little bit more just because I'm a big fan of the biped werewolves on their hind legs, you know? Yeah, me too. Yeah, that yeah, kind of, yeah. when people get that right, and Bad Moon's definitely one of them, like especially when yeah. it's tearing ash through the woods and you can see it just like ripping through the trees after, it's terrifying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I love, I mean, American Werewolf in London is no denying is amazing, but yeah. I, I do love the howling. There's just so many things about that film I love. Mm. you know that joe dante did and it's weird and dark and perverted and, yeah <laughs> and you know the werewolf is amazing i love that thin head with the yeah. long and the big scraggly ear and the big round eye. i just loved it <laughs> it's terrifying i mean i had this idea i had this thought i know we don't get many new werewolf films i, I think there's a few in the pipeline but you know obviously the film the revenant with uh, dicaprio and all that and the bear scene yeah. can mm -hmm. you imagine like if someone took that the idea of what, how long it lingers on that attack and how real and visceral and scary it is. Imagine that if that was done in a horror movie, but with a werewolf attack, like yeah. say the American Werewolf in London remake that I've heard is happening. Imagine if it was like that level of intensity for the that attack on the Moors, like that would be incredible. But maybe less is more, I'm not sure. But when I watched The Revenant, I couldn't help but wonder what that would be like with a werewolf attack. <laughs> oh yeah, that'd be amazing. I would, I would love to see something that realistic done in a horror genre like to do a werewolf movie done as authentic and beautiful as the remnant was would be amazing i don't yeah. know why, why why i guess uh people don't want to spend a lot of money on horror movies <laughs> yeah. i guess werewolf ones are so tricky because everyone expects such an elaborate you know transformation scene it's always got to live yeah. up to american werewolf yeah and even the one from the howling i thought was really creepy as well yeah it's funny the way yeah. dog soldiers they just did it under the table <laughs> I, I i'd be fine with that i don't have to see a werewolf transformation all the time i mean a little mm. bit here and there but i just want to see a really cool werewolf movie i was actually thinking of writing one 
had an uh-huh. idea for one. So uh, you never know, maybe. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I, I might bother you with some of my ideas. Of, like since childhood, I've had these visions of certain scenes in a werewolf movie. What would be absolutely terrifying? Because I think a werewolf has the potential to be the scariest thing put on film. Yeah, like, really. Yeah, yeah. It's just such a terrifying thought of something like that coming after you. But what about yeah. Cursed? You worked on that one as well. Worked on Cursed for a bit. Well, there was many incarnations of Cursed. There was. It was shot. I think, if I remember right, three times. It, it was shot and then it shut down and they retold it and then shot it again and then shut down and retold it and shot again. Uh, that that movie was shot over the course of literally years. Wow. And and by different, you know, I think Rick Baker started off doing the design for the werewolf and then it switched to K and B. Uh-huh. I worked for K and B on that show. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh what, who else? Somebody else. I don't know. That that movie was all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've only um, ever seen the version that came out in the UK, and then I found out not too long ago that there's a much more sort of R-rated version, and it's longer, and I've never been able to oh. find it, but I'm oh, definitely going to try and track it down. I didn't know that. Yeah. It, huh. Yeah, these were all, you know, I worked on so many movies uh, over the course of the years because I worked solely for shops. Yeah. certain shops for many years and of course you good you you know you're working for a shop you're you're making stuff and working on you know five movies at a time sometimes you know mm-hmm. you're doing uh, a month on this one and two months on that one and go to set for this one for a month and you know you're just you're so all over the place mm-hmm. so uh, i think that's why a lot of my credit i have so many credits because i was just I, all i ever did was work oh that's yeah. all i ever did now but <laughs> yeah, man. but uh you know, it's just certainly it. busy. I know that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, very man. busy. I mean, obviously, you won the Oscar for um, Suicide Squad. Was that just for Killer Croc, or any other bits and pieces? Um, I I advised on some of the other makeups and stuff, how to you know what how to do it, and what to use, and, and kind of design wise. But I only executed the Killer Croc makeup. That was a full time job. That was, oh. uh, hmm. uh, and I'm and I'm honored that they made an exception to include me on the ticket because of that um i was told and and um so i was very flattered and uh, it was a really hard job and so that that just that makeup alone uh was, it was a it was a very intense full-time job mm-hmm. that um uh it seemed to go on forever <laughs> and the fact that uh, it had underwater scenes as well like the makeup yeah. had to be, you know to swim and that must have been a whole other challenge Oh God, the underwater stuff. Yeah. Plus we had two to two different guys in that suit, you know, stunt guy and everything and, and harnesses and underwater. And, and, you know, you're trying to keep that makeup on while it's being pulled through this chlorinated warm water (laughs) over and over for days on end. And, and, uh, um, it it was, a it's an intense makeup. It was, um, a lot, a lot of work and a lot of maintenance because, when I was working on that, one thing I really, that was around the time where touching up makeups digitally was getting very popular. Mm. So uh, I, I didn't want that to happen. I was I was adamant that I didn't want that makeup touched up mm. at all. I, I wanted to make sure it looked good in every single frame and every single shot or at least try. So I, it was very labor intensive chasing it, and laborious, keeping it up and maintenance of it all day. So. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I just stayed on it and it paid off, I guess, you know, hard work does pay off. So yeah, big time, man. It looked incredible. Yeah. And like, Thanks. especially cause he has that, obviously, you know, the lighting plays a big part and just, it looked, it actually looked alive. It didn't just look like he was wearing a suit. You believed it, you know, it looked organic. And thank you. That's, that's the hard thing to do is, is make something look organic and that it's alive. Um, I mean, it, it, look, you can only do so much, but, uh, that's the point and that's the reason why i painted it that way and everything there, there's there's a reason to it all mm. you know and uh i would have liked the design to be a little more asymmetrical a little more grotesque mm. but i think they were trying to not uh they they, they didn't want it to be too horrifying yeah scare the kids <laughs> yeah and so we had to pull back on that a lot so uh, mm. uh but you know for what it is it it, it, it uh it, it seemed to work, and and I'm, I'm hoping that they, much like the the Zack Snyder 
Justice League. I'm, I'm hoping someday they'll they'll do a, a David Ayer cut of that movie because it is a different movie. It's a wow. it's a much darker, uh, in, more interesting film. I I think. I, you yeah. Know, uh, so I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, after Justice League, which I really did like. Um, I mean, it, it was incredibly epic. I mean, I've seen it twice now, so I've watched four hours, uh, sorry, eight hours worth of Justice League in the past week. Wow. But yeah, man, I really liked it. Um, I remember hearing about the David Ayer, like, extra cut of Suicide Squad, obviously probably features a lot more Joker, and was there a lot more, well, you can't say and stuff, but I hope it does happen. You know, I'm yeah, always up for seeing the director's original vision of what he really wanted to show people. Yeah. Well, I mean, when we were shooting it, I got the feeling and it definitely looked like it was more of a, because there was more of the other stories intertwined and, and the look of it and, and stuff that got cut out. It was much more like an escape from New York kind of oh. kind of vibe to it, you know, oh. which, which of course, one of my favorite movies. So um, yeah, I love that film, man. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, hopefully someday we'll see, you know, but I, again, you know, people either like it or they hate it. A lot of people hated that movie, but you know what? It was for as hard as it was, and as much as I was trying to kind of walk away from it when I was done with it because it was so hard. It, mm. it, it, uh, I was, I was very fortunate and lucky. So <laughs> I cannot complain about Suicide Squad one damn bit. So yeah, man. Well, before um, I move on to some of the just Meyer stuff, because obviously a lot of the people who watch this channel. Uh, I want to just um, touch on the fact that your podcast with um, Malfunction, that's uh, Sean Clark, is it? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And um, basically, if everyone on YouTube types in the thing with two heads podcast, it will take you straight to the various videos. I mean, I just watched the most recent one, uh, but obviously you've got incredible interviews with James Duke Courtney, uh, Annie Manichek and um, Nick, Nick Castle. You know, you've, yeah. you've spoken at length with them about everything to do with Halloween and really in-depth conversations yeah. on that channel. So everyone who's watching this, I'm sure you already know about it, but type in the Thing With Two Heads podcast and you'll find Sean Clark and uh, Mr. Nelson here doing incredibly nice in-depth. They're just awesome to sit back and relax and listen to. I, I put them on when I'm cooking the dinner and then I finish eating and I'm listening to it. <laughs> It's just I have that's it great. Video. That's what it's that's what it's meant. That, that's what it was meant to do. And thank you for 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 helping plug in that because we're yeah, man. You know, well, it has to be done. I mean, it's it's coming up big time. It's coming up really fast. So it's an amazing yeah. podcast, man. It's really really good. And I love Sean's videos about his posters with all the signatures and all that stuff. And oh yeah, one where he fell asleep and didn't remember filming it the next morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got so much cool stuff and cool content. And as always, that guy never stops, man. I don't know how he does it, but but he does it. He's a great guy, and I love Sean. So he, uh, we've been having fun, and that was kind of the point. Going back to what you said was, you know, uh, that's part of it. It's, it was something that you could sit and watch, or you can put on in the background and, and just hang out with a couple friends and chill. Mm. And, yeah. and that was that's really the whole point of it. You know, we thought about going. Well, should we be doing new movie reviews? Should we be doing what a lot of other people are doing and, and to get more viewers and listeners and things? And we we're like, no, let's just do what we do. And because yeah. the whole point is just to have fun. We're not, you know, you know, we're we're just there to hang out with our friends. So you know, that's the point. Awesome, man. Well, I've um, I've been very careful about the kind of Halloween questions that I've been coming up with. They're not all to do with the the recent ones some of them i guess are to do with the 78 as well just little you know things really, kind of... it, it, it's so funny to me that of all the things i've done in my career and everything that i've accomplished i i'm never gonna get away from halloween am i this no, is you... never I'm the... <laughs> that mask man it, it all comes down to the mask at the end of the day if the mask isn't right then the film just won't click properly and the mask from 2018 is probably I, i've been thinking about it a lot I just I think it might be my favorite, even including the original. I know the original is the original and I love it. I absolutely do love it. But there's something about there's something in there with the 2018 that I just can't. I never stop being mesmerized by it. It's just such a cool design. Um, oh, thank you. I guess thank you. Well, the first wow. random question that I had was um, and this is a bit of a nerdy one because I have quite a few of the Tots 2018 masks uh -huh. and they're quite tight fitting. And I was just wondering, because I, I remember uh, in an interview where James Drew Courtney said that it was very difficult to see when he was wearing it. Now, obviously, one of his eyes is covered by the, the prosthetic, maybe. But, yeah. I mean, could you say whether um, the actual mask, when he was wearing it in the film, obviously it was, like, moulded for him, but was it quite a tight fit on him, or was it quite loose, or...? No, it was it was uh, it wasn't tight and it wasn't too loose. Um, it, it was exactly like a, a, a 
fairly general fitting Halloween mask is. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it um, the reason why he couldn't see so well sometimes was uh, a we were shooting at night a lot and in the dark a lot. He's always in the dark, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and no matter what you have in front of your face, it, it takes away your peripheral vision. You know, mm -hmm. unless your eyes are right up against it, you know, you're you're, you're not you got tunnel vision. So that's one reason. The other reason is he did have a prosthetic eye on every shot because, you know, we were only supposed to put that eye on, I think, twice, three yeah. times in the movie. But David Gordon Green liked it so much and we liked the way it looked and we liked the way that occasionally you caught a, a reflection or a glimpse of it just occasionally. So it, it ended up being cool. So he ended up using it every day. And yeah. so... Uh, so that was another reason. The other reason is, you know, when you're in, in a mask and as much as James is and you're sweating and you're moving and you're acting and get sweaty in there, your head kind of moves around, the thing gets slick and, and you know, uh, unless you're conscious of where your chin is at all times, you know, you it, it can slide and you have to readjust it. I was always going in and readjusting it and I also, well known that I put strips of foam inside to keep it in a certain spot and to keep it exactly where it needed to be also for the same reasons and I wanted it to look different all the time mm -hmm. um, so I would take strips of foam out and put strips of foam in and put them in different places so it would sit different so you were always getting that kind of chameleon feeling from like the first movie um, yeah. Whether I accomplished that or not, I don't know. But, I noticed uh, something like that in the scene um, when he attacks, was it Vicky, the babysitter, when it comes out of the closet? That scene in the bedroom, there's just certain shots where it has, it kind of reminded me a little bit of Dick Warlock kind of look to it. Yeah, yeah. And then other times, yeah, like just, it does literally change shape. <laughs> yeah, well, that was kind of the idea and, and, and just subtly, you know, but that's, that's the reason why sometimes James couldn't really see. And also too, you know, the way we shoot it, it's lit, you know, we don't, I don't put those black screens in the eyes and stuff. We, it, it, it's just a mask in what it is. And the way it's lit, you know, a lot of times lights, key lights are in certain positions where it's casting a shadow on James's eyes, you know, so he has a difficult time seeing. He, he's got to do a lot of stuff in that mask. I, I got to, I give it to James, man. I tell you that guy's a, he's a, he's a machine and he, uh, he puts up with a lot of stuff and a lot of my shit and a lot of other people's stuff and direction and stunts and lighting and being in the dark and having one eye and you know he's just so he it's a testament to, to how good he really is in that in that suit so that that's the reason why um occasionally he couldn't see so literally every shot i mean i can't think of a shot honestly i'm not just saying it because it's you but i can't think of a shot from the 2018 film featuring myers that i don't love like one of my favorite simple little shots is when he hears Allison come in and he's up on the balcony after Laurie falls over and he looks back. Just the way the mask looks then is perfect, man. It's just it's a, it's a great shot. Yeah, I'm I'm with, I'm with you on that. That's one of the best shots of of Michael Myers in that movie for uh -huh. sure. And I refer to him as Michael Myers because I you know it's funny I I get not to not to sidetrack you. We'll, we'll answer all your questions, but I I it's funny the it's I get asked so many questions and have been on so many programs and stuff and, and interviews and magazines and things about this mask and it's it it's funny because i'm i think for this next round and i think probably maybe even after this i'm going to stop talking about it because only because i feel like too much of the too much of the mystery gets revealed and and i, I really really kind of didn't want to talk about it at all when the movie came out because i wanted it to remain a character on screen i wanted yeah. it to stay i didn't want everyone to know everything about it you yeah. know and because it, it i wanted to live there not yeah. out here you know yeah, yeah. But no, i get that man it. like mystique is a really it. powerful thing like most of the bands that i grew up loving were the bands that you really before the internet you really really had to work hard to find out about them like they, yeah, they didn't do music videos or they didn't do interviews much and stuff like that. So I know how powerful and important it is to keep the stick around something, to keep it interesting. Because otherwise, yeah, it is true. The more you know about something, the less intrigue there is, and it's powerful. Exactly. And that, and yeah, and that's why, especially when Halloween Kills comes out, I, I'm not gonna. You guys are all on your own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot in there, so. <laughs> Man.
But anyway, going going back to your questions, what else? What else? Well, well I'm going to ch choose them carefully here. Uh, let's see. No, ask you can ask you can ask me every single one. Oh, that's right. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Did you know what the coveralls uh, were going to look like before you started designing the 2018 mask? Was that all decided already, or was it after the mask was finished? It was kind of during. It was mm -hmm. it was the process kind of went hand in hand uh, during the the building and the prep of it. Um, was working, you know, closely like like you do when you're on a crew with with the other departments and and Emily, the costume designer, who's a, a wonderful woman and a, a wonderful costume designer. And she was very adamant about getting it right, obviously, and as we all were. And so uh, I kind of knew. I mean, I knew before I got there, you mm -hmm. know, before I got to Charleston. Uh, uh, Charleston, is that where we shot it? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I kind of knew. But, you know, it was less about, for me, it was, you know, you trust the co the costume designer and the director and, and producers and, the, and the Michael Simmons, the, the DP, who's wonderful. Um, you trust that everyone's doing their job. So when all the pieces come together, mm. you know, it's like, I remember the first day, and I've told this story many times, the first day that I put that mask on. And when, when when James went and got in his jumpsuit, we came to set. It was me and Danny McBride and, and David Gordon Green and I think Malik Akkad and Ryan Turek. And we all were standing there, and I went in the back room, and I put the mask on James, and I and I got goosebumps and, and then I came out and I was like, you guys ready? And they're like, let's see it. And so he came out and we all just kind of, <laughs> kind of, kind of just kind of teared up and got yeah. goosebumps because it was, there he was, he's standing in front of us and it, and it all came together. That was the moment it all came together, coveralls, you know, boots, the mask, everything. So it was pretty exciting, pretty exciting. Amazing, man. Um, just to settle, I'm, I think it's already been settled on a forum somewhere that I haven't actually seen, but being the kind of collector that I am, I have quite a few Michael Myers things and, and I, we'll talk about some of the custom stuff that you have as well, but do you know what color the coveralls were in 78? <laughs> <laughs> I, um, they were, I think they were green. Green? I was, you know, it's so funny. It, it, I was told, Nick Castle told me they were like a, like a dark green, almost to where it would read blue. It could see, be blue. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I can text him right now and ask him if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, you know, that's an ongoing argument. And I, and again, I, I like to let it. Yeah, let yeah it, maybe best to just let it live. <laughs> let's let it lie. You know, it is what it is, you know. And, and, and I love that there's so much mystery around it. Even yeah. though I know a lot of it now that I, I've become friends with Mr. Castle, who's a wonderful man. And I know a lot of stuff. I know too much. <laughs> But uh, you know, I, I like I like the mystery of it. Yeah. Awesome, man. Sorry, sorry to disappoint you. No, no, no. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> we're talking about the custom figure stuff. So you have quite a few pieces from uh, Tanila and Once Customs, is it? I have two. I have yeah. two. I have a, 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 a twenty eighteen, mm -hmm. and I have a seventy eight uh, uh, that they they were kind enough to send me, and they're beautiful. I love them. They're super cool. Yeah. Uh, they're not here. This is an apartment that I'm in in Atlanta. I don't have any cool stuff like you do. You got all that cool shit behind you. A lot of cool I'm, shit. Uh, I'm here in a yellow room, which is really ugly. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, but yeah, oh, I, I have those. In the background on the podcast with the masks and stuff, man. It looks incredible. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, Sean's awesome. vinyls and stuff. He must have a, well, he's probably got way more than that, but yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Sean's, <laughs> Sean's, Sean's collection is, 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 second to none man it's amazing yeah uh the only other question i had for the mask was how long did they give you from the moment you found out you were going to be involved how big was the window of time to get it done or that kind of thing um we started on that the first thing so we had you know it was definitely a, a general consensus that we you know that's what was going to take the time if anything you know uh so we started that early. I can't remember. I mean, we shot that in. Dude, I'm sorry. It's like it's been a while. they all bleed into another. I'd say I think we started that in February, right? We shot that in February, or, or and so I'd say I started on it 
Oh, am I wrong? No, no, no. Okay. Um, I'd say I started on it in January. Mm. Um, uh, if I'm, and I could be way wrong. Uh, and I'd say I had about, I'd say I had about to build everything and get everything in order and get everything going, including all the effects and stuff. Mm. I'd say I had like six weeks, maybe. Okay. Wow. Six, seven weeks to, to do it all. It was very short and very quick. So you never uh, had a moment where you were designing the mask and then kind of, you know, like a piece of paper and then throw it away and start again. You weren't happy with it or anything? Uh, no, we, we did one other version. I think it was, we did one version that was more weathered, mm. if I remember right. Um, and as far as the 2018 version, we did, we did a, a more weather, a bit more weathered and, and just to try it because mm. we were like, let's see how far we could take it because I was really adamant about, and so was David about let's not do, and Rob Zombie's, uh, Wayne Toth's mask is, I love, uh, Wayne's a friend of mine and he does great work and I, I thought his mask looked really cool. Um, but we didn't want to go that far and we certainly didn't want to tread on that water and we wanted to i was very adamant about keeping the the silhouette and the profile and the character and those landmarks that 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 had to be there without those things it wasn't going to work it mm -hmm. had it had to all that other stuff is is you know icing so we did one i think it was a more weathered version and then we we kicked it back and um, and ended up being what it is now, which, uh, you know, a lot of people who are doing rehauls, I get so many, I get message after message about rehauls and telling people what I do and how I paint it. And I could give you every single step of the way, but no one, you're never going to be able to do it the way that I do it. Just mm -hmm. like I can't do something that this guy does, even if I have all the same thing. It's just in the sleight of hand. It's in the, that thing. So um, it's it's a difficult thing. I've seen a couple of people get close. Uh, and there's the problem is that when you're shooting it, David's really careful about shooting that mask and Michael Simmons lighting it and, uh, photographing it so that it 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 changes and it, and so that's why people think that there's all these different versions of the mask like i get all these questions there's the closet mask and there's this mask and there's this version mask and then i use this mask once and there's all these masks <laughs> well we didn't have the money to make all those masks <laughs> okay so so that you know but uh, uh, it's it's all how you shoot it, and less is more. You know, it depends on how it's how it. You know, a lot of people go too heavy and all that, all that stuff, all the detailing and the lining and the aging. It's actually not that heavy. Mm -hmm. It's just sometimes it appears that way based on the lighting and the shadows and where we're at, and sometimes it doesn't. So, um, I we we did one version, and then the next version was the version. Mm -hmm. we, we 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 we. Before I ever showed any photo of a, uh, to David, I wanted to make sure it was as close as it was going to be, you know. And he trusted me, which was very nice. And yeah. so, yeah, but um, it, we didn't go through a ton of versions. I thought we were going to go through like 10, 15 versions. I was yeah. convinced. Yeah. But we got lucky. So <laughs> I remember when the I remember the day like the, that first poster, the first image, you know, the classic poster with the side of the face. I just remember thinking, I mean, I kind of learned more as I went along, but the first thing that hit my brain when I saw it was it, it looked like the 78 mask had aged like a face, like kind of, mm -hmm. you know, just maybe that's not mm -hmm. exactly what was intended, but just my first impression when I saw it, that's what creeped me out about it because it, it carried with it so much kind of history and, and weight because of that. It kind of, it really looked like a spooky, like as if it kind of, you know, was like almost human. Mm hmm <laughs> yeah, it, that that uh, I mean, there was a little tiny bit of intention of that. Not really, and not as much as people think there was. I think the the reason why it comes off that way is is because we wanted it to have character. It was mm. just trying to find ways of, of giving it character. And, you know, I've I've I I don't read a lot of the negative shit. I don't read a lot of the positive stuff. But uh, uh, you know, I've had people tell me that you know. It, 
mass stone age like that. And I'm like, I know, I'm very aware of that. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's, there's cinematic, you know, artistic expression and there's reality. Yes, I, there, there were a million different ways I could have gone with that mask, a million different. And, and, you know, we chose this road and I think it was the right road. I think it works. It worked for the context of the film and it worked for what we were trying to accomplish. And, and um, I think anything else, well, that's not true, but I, I, could we have gotten closer to the 78? Absolutely. If we had a little more time, more R&D to make five masks and throw them away, absolutely. But uh, it just wasn't in the cards, man. And, you know, uh, um, I think that it, if you did the mask the way it is now, mm -hmm. it wouldn't work. It I've seen easy. the pictures of the one, you know, the actual mask and the, the all here is kind of gone. Well, not gone, but yeah yeah i mean you could do it and make it cool but um that's not what david wanted to do mm -hmm. so you know you're, you there's there's what it's a collaborative effort and it's not just me calling all the shots although david did give me a, a tremendous amount of trust and responsibility as a fan because he knows i'm a huge fan mm -hmm. but you know ultimately you all have to come together to work within the, again, the context of the movie that you're making. So there are a lot of reasons that decisions go into what they do. So. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. man, I think you, you didn't put a single foot wrong with it. It's absolutely perfect. Even down to the hair, everything, everything. Absolutely. Thanks. awesome. And I can see the 78 in there. You know, you yeah. look at it, you can see him there. It's just, it's really creepy. It's there. It's there. I mean, I wanted to go a little more baggy and a little more, but again we needed that silhouette and that familiar face because that familiar face had been gone for so long and, mm. and we really needed to at least come back with that mm. you know with that from that what everyone wanted when everyone yeah. needed mm. and so uh we did the best we could and the hair's hard man I, you know, yeah the hair hair is my least favorite thing to do but for whatever reason i'm good at it so and it's really hard and and uh uh, there's a lot less hair on it than people think there is and mm. and, and uh, the products that product I use and how I style it how I do it because I I did every mask and I still do I have, to this day painted every single one styled every one cut the hair everything so because I, I just it has to be a certain way you know mm. so no, absolutely but, it, it makes or breaks it really I mean I know that just from messing around with my figures I know like it's, it's a different thing but just when I get those little one six scale, I mean, they're all custom made by different artists all over the world. And if one, if the hair is not styled right, it just throws the whole thing off. So I know how important it is. Yeah. 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 I don't know how you guys do those little heads. I, that's, that would drive me bonkers. Man. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, there's people out there do, 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 do a really great, really amazing job. Yeah, man. Well, their passion is just so strong for it, honestly. I mean, it's incredible. They've been doing it now for almost 20 years, like two decades of people. That's all they do. They just, I mean, obviously they've got families, that, but they're down there every spare minute they have and they're sculpting and trying to get it right. And it's so difficult. So it's so cool. Yeah, it, it is difficult. I mean, you know, that mask, again, I've said it a thousand times. It's, it was the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. So many factors of why that thing looked the way it looked, you know, and to recreate it. Very difficult, and I've seen people out there that have, that have done it and gotten pretty fucking close, man. Mm -hmm. But you know, yeah, you know, look, if, 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 if I had nothing but years to sit in a basement and <laughs> work on one thing, yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> so. Have you um, have you been keeping up with the Trick or Treat Studios One Six Scale figures? I'm literally getting the 2018 tomorrow morning. It's coming, so I'm so excited about that. It it looks cool. Yeah, those are looking really great. I wish they would send me one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it on your point. Thanks, Chris Zephyr, if you're out there. Can I have it? Uh, uh, I, I know this. I mean, I'm in England, so I, I can't. I don't talk to anyone in Trick or Treat Studios, but the the place over here called Mad About Horror. They sell all that stuff. They're kind of like the UK guys for distributing it. So, yeah, okay. man, they got some amazing stuff. But uh, just before I let you go, I was just wondering about stuff like Aliens and Predator. Uh, if you had the opportunity to work on either a, you know, an Alien thing or a Predator thing, which one would you kind of, if any, would you lean towards? I'd go Alien. 
no, not even a, no questions asked. Mm. Uh, the the original Alien is my favorite, and the original Alien is a masterpiece of mm. film. It's a masterpiece, mm. and uh, I would work on one of those in a second. I was never really into the Predator, to be honest with you. I never, mm. I never. I mean, the, the first movie's funny and it's mm. fun, and, and you know, <laughs> there's a lot of good 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 shit in that movie but uh, uh i never really got into any of the other predators at all you know so but yeah alien man hands down i agree like alien's always been in my top three films of all time it's in there in the top three i love like taxi driver and i'm a big fan of batman begins for some reason it's like one of my favorite movies like okay. I know everyone loves the dark knight but that first one for me the way he looks because i know like i was interested to hear your thoughts on that because obviously everything you do with costumes and effects and stuff like um which suit did you prefer, the Batman Begins one or the Dark Knight one with the big thick neck? You know, uh, you know I don't know. I like that it changed all the time. Um, I I think I like them both. Mm. I think they're just two different, again, two different things for two different stories. I, I, I it's funny how people have to have pick one. <laughs> yeah. I like them both. I, I think cool. they're both cool and appropriate for for their movie. You know, yeah. um, I like to both of those movies for different reasons mm. you know i i, I like the the first one because it's an excellent origin story and, and uh uh and chris nolan's amazing i love the second one because heath ledger's joker is mm. just it was Incredible. just fantastic and mm. i loved how they set him up and i loved how they it's just so good um and fun uh so so yeah i don't know i'm i'm curious to uh, the new batman um with uh, what's his face, um, Robert Pattinson. Robert Pattinson. I'm very curious about that. Very curious. I'll see it because if it's any, it, I, I really enjoyed the last Joker, the, the Joaquin Phoenix uh, Joker. I, I thought it was really good. I'm, I'm, yeah, <laughs> <Over there. laughs> so good because uh, uh, and yeah, it was Taxi Driver, but I don't care. Taxi Driver. <laughs> That's a great movie. So yeah, what's the problem? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm curious about this new Batman. We'll see. You know. And were you a fan of? Um... Pumpkin head back in like eighties, the original pumpkin. Yeah. yeah. The first one, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. I've never seen the sequels. I've heard they're terrible, so I kind of avoided them, but I just <laughs> yeah, love a good I, monster movie. Yeah, yeah, me too. I don't remember the sequels very well, to be honest with you. I know one of them had wings or something. I don't know. All right. Uh, uh, I, I don't I don't remember them very well. I, I saw them when they first came out and that's about it. Pumpkin head's always on or or oh somebody's always playing it so you know i know that one a little better so and lance hendrickson's amazing but uh, oh absolutely but yeah yeah it was uh, i like pumpkin head sure another great film i thought was tremors the effects of that i think they still hold up today that's still a good mm -hmm. film mm -hmm. one of my mm -hmm. favorites yeah yeah that i i saw that once <laughs> <laughs> it's I, worth I like, it. <laughs> it holds up uh, it's good yeah no it's it's cool i just you know, it's funny what I like and what I don't like. I don't, I don't know why. It, it makes no, it, there's no rhyme or reason for it. <laughs> and you play bass, right? I do. I play bass. I play guitar, a yeah. uh, little bit of drums. Oh, right. Nice, nice. I think since I was 15, 15, I've been playing. Yeah, man. Yeah. Same here. I've, I've always been, I love music. I miss, I haven't been in a band for about six years now, but I do miss it. And obviously, I haven't, um, you know, I mean, how are you coping with, did you used to jam with people regularly before the lockdown stuff, or is that on? I did, yeah. I used to jam with a couple other Mega Effects guys, and it was super cool. Um, I haven't done that in a while, for obvious reasons. But, yeah, music to me is everything. Uh, it's, you know, next to movies, it's obviously music. But I get a lot of my inspiration and a lot of, uh, you know, therapy from mostly music. And, and that's what gets me through anything. Even if I'm kind of trying to figure something out makeup wise or design wise, it's usually music that pulls me out of it. Yeah. It's rarely anything else. And mm -hmm. I just watched a great documentary uh, while I've been in this quarantine at night. I watched it. It's a documentary about Rick Rubin, the producer. It's called yeah. Shangri-La. Have you seen it? I haven't seen it, no. Oh, it's fantastic. It's a four part series about Rick Rubin who Whoever doesn't know who Rick Rubin is, he's he's a very legendary uh, music producer. Mm. Producer, uh, and anyway, uh, very inspirational. Uh, as if you're an artist of any kind or a musician of any kind, you should definitely check it out. 
Is it on Netflix? Uh, I think it's on Amazon. It's oh, not okay. on Netflix. I don't know over there. You might have it over there on something, but I, I watched it on Amazon. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, oh, music's always been such an important thing for me, man. It's, um, I mean, I was a bit kind of getting a bit grumpy old man thing setting in where I kind of just, I like the stuff that I like from when I was getting, you know, when I was growing up and then kind of not too much that's going on today. But to be honest, there is a fair bit going on these days that I just haven't discovered. It, it is out there. There is some good music still happening. Oh yeah, you just have to really look for it. It's harder to find mm. now because it gets lost in all the pabble that mm. we're sold. You know, so <laughs> you, you yeah. got to really look for it. It's there. You know, Jack White's still doing great stuff. Uh, there's a great band out of out of the out of the UK called Royal Blood, which I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, I love Royal Blood. Um, um, there's there's so there's a lot of really good rock bands still out there, and, mm. and all kinds of. Uh, different kind of music band. jazz jazz is fantastic still so mm. just gotta look for it yeah man well listen christopher i'll let you go man i really do appreciate you doing this it's gonna be it's gonna be a big hit from a channel getting someone like you on there man it's like it's oh, pretty man. I, well i hope i answered all your questions i hope uh, people get to get get what they get what they want i know they can they hear me talking too much, so I, I just want to make sure I got you covered. Man. Oh, man. No, I really appreciate it. And once again, everyone, make sure you go on over to Sean Clark's channel. It's called Malfunk Sean, but just the easiest way to find it, type in the Thing With Two Heads podcast, find one of the videos, and then subscribe to the channel. But, man, thank you so much, Christopher. I cannot wait to see Halloween Kills. I'm honestly, like, really, really excited about it. And You should be. You should be very excited about it. Everyone should be very excited about it. So. Oh, man. <laughs> Jeez. But thank you for having me. I appreciate it, and uh, and uh, thanks for the plug, and mm. and keep up keep up your uh, good work on the YouTube channel. Man. Oh, thank you so much, man. Well, take yeah. it easy, Christopher. All right, buddy. Thanks, man. See ya.